All right, we are live. Good evening, everyone. And I am super excited today to bring on Tim to share his story with you all and give you hope when you can't get rid of that stubborn pain in the butt. So Tim, let's do this. Let's have you lower the volume on your computer or mute your computer. Awesome. All right. So guys, we've had some technical difficulties today. And all right, there we go. Now I'm not getting any feedback there. Awesome. All right. So we've had some technical difficulties. This is like round five. For some reason, every single week, guys, we do a live show within our Healthy Runner Facebook group. And today, for some reason, like I have an amazing story to share with Tim and Zoom wasn't letting me stream in our Facebook group. So here I am. I'm here. Tim is here. We are excited to share this story with all of you um, because it's a pretty incredible story. And for those of you who have ever had hamstring pain, it's this kind of stubborn pain in your butt area, in your sit bone, at the top of your hamstring. And this is hamstring tendon pain, or what we call proximal hamstring tendinopathy. And we want to help you get back to sitting again, because sitting is usually something that's very painful. And most importantly, because we're all runners and we want to be able to run fast and long again. So Tim is going to be sharing his story. So thank you so much, first and foremost, Tim, for your patience and uh, for coming on the show to share your story with our community. Thank you, Dwayne. I'm excited to be here. Yeah, no. So guys, in this live stream um, within Facebook here, Tim is going to share his story on how he overcame this common injury suffered by many runners. So for those of you who are here on the Facebook Live, if you guys don't mind, just drop me a little live in the comment box below. Let me know you're here. And if you're catching the replay of this, which I know many of you probably will catch the replay now that we are streaming to a different um form tonight. Um, just type in replay. I'll give you a little shout out and uh, let you know that you caught it. So before I forget, um, I must mention that our summer cohort of our team healthy runner half marathon program is starting next week. So if you're out there and you are looking to conquer your first live in-person half marathon, we would love to help you crush your half marathon race and feel good again. So if you haven't seen any of the posts that I've been dropping uh, during this launch week, then check out some of the previous posts um, within Facebook, within Instagram. And if you want to know more about the details, you didn't know about this program that's happening for your first live race. And here locally, we are the training partner for the Cheshire Half Marathon. So I'm super excited about that right in my hometown. It's a one of the it is the first half marathon I ever ran. So I'm super excited about this race to come back live again. But if you want the details, just type in team into the comment box. And if you're listening to this on the Healthy Runner podcast, check out the link in the show notes. So guys, this is Tim. He was a part of one of our programs. And I'm really excited to have Tim on the show today. Tell us um, about his story. So Tim, tell us, who are you and what do you do? How you doing? Thanks for inviting me again, Dwayne. Um, so uh, like you, I was an adult onset runner. Uh, I started running in my late thirties, about 12 years ago. Um, and, uh, yeah, I did it basically for, for health reasons. I was probably 50 pounds heavier than I am now. And, uh, the doctor was telling me all kinds of bad things from my blood work and, and, and I needed to do, change my, some things in my lifestyle. So I, I took that as a, as a, as a warning sign to, to, to really make some personal changes. So I started running for health and uh, I teamed up with a buddy of mine at work and, and he convinced me to, to, to sign up for a 10 K and, and I did it and I really had a great time doing it. It was lots of fun. And I, I, I just got hooked. And the next thing I knew, I, you know, it's 12 years later, I've run nine marathons. I've run 20 half marathons and uh, scores of other shorter races, five Ks, 10 Ks. And uh, throughout the years. So it's, it's, it's really been an incredible journey and, and I just love running. Wow. That is quite the resume. 
that you have tallied up in honestly a relatively short amount of time, Tim. So I just want to give a little shout out here. So we have Coach Cat on the live here. Christy's here on the live. Amber, thank you so much for joining. Cheryl, what's going on? Cheryl uh, just joined our program today. So congratulations to you uh, to get in on the team Healthy Runner Half Marathon program. Kim, thank you so much for tuning in to the live as well. Um, so as we go along tonight, Drop any of your questions that you may have for Tim in the comment box, and we'll do our best to be able to get to those during the live interview. And as um, I know how, or I want to know how many of you that are here on the live right now have had either hamstring pain in the past, or you're currently dealing with this injury. Um, if you are just type in hamstring into the comment box, I'm kind of curious to see who we have here on the live and it will help kind of shape some of the conversation as Tim and I uh, go through this and he shares his story. So Tim, before you started working with us, I want to dive into the scenario that you were facing and how was your running um, going at that point or what was going well and what wasn't going well? Um, sure. Uh, so I was, this, this originally happened um, right before the, actually the onset of the pandemic. Uh, it was, I was actually training for Boston, uh, Boston Marathon last year. Uh, I was really you know, entering kind of the last stretch of, of training right before the pandemic and, and, and the pandemic hit and suddenly races were being canceled. And, and I said to myself, well, I'm just going to, you know, finish out this marathon cycle after I learned that Boston was canceled and I'll finish out this training cycle and then I'll, I'll figure out what I do after that and it was you know several weeks out before the the, the race and um, I, I noted a you know some some tightness in my in my hamstring I was doing some 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 uh, 800 meter repeats and and it, it kind of I, I noticed it but I didn't really pay attention to it and I continued to train as I typically do. Uh, I don't, I don't listen to my, my body all the time when I should be, but um, you know, it wasn't much longer after that, that I, it became something that I noticed that I, I was having pain while running, not just after my run. Uh, and then it suddenly became a, a condition where I, I couldn't sit. And, uh, you know, I, I, it was very strange. And, and so I said, you know, I'm just going to shut things down here and, and, and just, you know, just take, you know, take some precautions to, to, to avoid, you know, injury any further. And my old standby when I get injured is to ride my bike. And uh, I found that riding my bike was actually more painful than running, just sitting on the, on the saddle. So I, I was really in dire straits at this point, because that was always my go-to uh, my go-to uh, cross-training platform uh, whenever I, I sustained some sort of an, an, an injury uh, from running that I was able to, to, to do something to keep my cardio going. But suddenly I, I was found myself in a position where I couldn't do anything um, that, I, that I enjoyed so, um, or could reproduce the, the, the cardio activity that I was getting from running or cycling. Um, and that's when I started to get really concerned. Yeah. And I, I remember that um, when we first connected um, that you were concerned. And at that point, were you running at all? You weren't running, correct? No, no. So this happened, again, it was right around the end of March, early April. Um, and, and I went to, to you know, as you know, my, my uh, orthopedist and, and sports chiro, their, their general guidance was shut it down. You, know, you need to just stop running. Um, and, and, and let's do some tests to try and figure out what it is. So we did, we did, you know, the x-rays and that all came back negative. And then they sent me to the MRI machine and I got an MRI and that's where they, they detected that, you know, I did have, um, it wasn't torn. It was, it was just, um, it was, you know, they, they, they didn't know that the, the hamstring, um, had some degeneration and, um, and, you know, again, the, the recipe was, you know, the rice formula, right? Or rest and, and, and ice and, and compression and, you know, stretch, you, you know, you know, you need to stretch, you know, you just got tight hamstrings and that was, that was brutal. And so this, this all, you know, took place, like I said, in, in early April, um, I found that, you know, by, by mid-May, none of this was working. I was doing things with my chiropractor, like dry needling, um, art uh, and other soft tissue manipulation to try and 
and and and help relieve and it, it provided some temporary relief but it, it didn't produce any result lasting results and i ended up uh you know not running for uh, a very long time longer than uh, a, a longer hiatus than i've taken from any other injury that i've had in my running career uh you know it went through the summer um i wasn't you know i i, I got to a point where i actually uh, on the in, on the advice of 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 my chiro to to perhaps seek out some alternate treatments, some more invasive treatments. Um, so we, I, I, I explored you know, the possibility of, of PRP injections. So I went and visited a specialist uh, in, in uh, you know, about an hour from my house. I, I drove to see a specialist and they did some ultrasounds and things and, and they laid out the alternatives. I, I could do a PRP um, uh, and, and, and something, you know, they didn't recommend surgery or anything like that. But, you know, again, this was pretty aggressive treatment for this. And, and I was a bit confounded because, you know, I, again, I'm going on three months here and really no improvement uh, and not really understanding what the, tr the right treatment was. There wasn't a lot of research that I could find or um, uh, a lot of um, resources to tap into to, you know, typically with, with running injuries, I've always been able to either work directly with my, my Cairo or my, uh, my uh, uh, orthopedist to, you know, for things like, you know, uh, inflammation type uh, overuse injuries and, and whether it be ITBS or, or, or a variety of other, you know, similar act, uh, injuries that can be remedied pretty commonly in, in, you know, four to six weeks or something like that. And, 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 but this was something of a different nature that I was not prepared to, uh, to deal with. Uh, and, and, and not knowing where to turn to really kind of, uh, you know, it, it, it built up a lot of anxiety and, and, uh, and, and just, you know, it mentally um, put, takes you to a pretty bad place. Um, so I, I happened to come across uh, a podcast that you were a guest on. Uh, I believe it was um, uh, the Strength Running Podcast, where you talked about your experience with this injury and how you overcame it and how you treated it in specific um, uh, uh, exercises and, and activities to, to help restore those, you know, those, those fibers in, in the hamstring and reduce, reduce and relieve and, and, and repair the, the, the injury. Uh, and I was intrigued and I said, Oh, Dwayne's in Connecticut. I live in Connecticut. I, I think I'm going to drop him a line because I'm running out of alternatives here. And I'm, I, I want to see what he has to say. Yeah. And I, thank you for sharing that. So first off, let me just backtrack Sure. A little bit, because those that are listening on the podcast, you were not able to see my face when Tim was talking about that he kept stretching his hamstring because that's the guidance he got. And that's what um, he thought would make it feel better. Um, so for those that don't know, stretching this condition is probably one of the worst things that you can do. Um, so let me just kind of put that out there now. And if you guys want, and we're going to talk about some of this, but if you guys want, I do have an ultimate guide for overcoming hamstring injuries and in runners. Um, and if you haven't seen that yet, just type in ultimate guide into the comment box. I will shoot it to you. It's a free guide, but I talk about how you don't want to stretch your hamstring. And this is a common story, a common scenario I hear over and over again, uh, just like Tim talked about. So I just want to make sure that we're clear that that is something that we do not want to do if you are struggling with this injury um, right now. So thanks for sharing how you found me. And I'm so glad that you listened to the podcast. That was a great one that I had with Jason. Um, I had fun on his show. So what made you though, to decide to get some help on this? Like I get a lot of people who reach out to me and say, you know, I have this pain and, you know, well, you know, I'm just going to wait, you know, things may get better. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to just wait it out, wait and see approach. Um, but clearly you wanted to take a different path. So what made you really pull the trigger on getting some guidance with us? Yeah, so, I mean, it, it had been four or five months already since I had in, in, incurred this injury and I wasn't improving. Uh, and I, I really felt like I had exhausted all the, the, the possibilities short of, of the more invasive uh, tactics that, that I, I shared with you a moment ago. Um, and, and when I spoke with you, you know, 
first of all, hearing, talking to somebody else who's experienced this pain and this injury and, and being able to relate to that was, was really important. And to, to know that there's, there, that you can overcome it. Um, and there's a treatment for this and, and, it, it, you know, with, with the right course of exercises and, and oversight that you can overcome this injury. And, and so, you know, I, I really kind of said, I don't have anything to lose at this point. And I, I really, you know, I really felt we engaged and, and made a connection when we talked. Um, and, uh, you know, I was very keen to say, when, when can I come visit you at your office? Yeah. Did you have any hesitations at all? No, no, I look, I was I, only hesitation I had was how long of a car ride is it? Because I got to be in my car for an hour. Because, so that, that was the biggest that was the biggest hesitation. And, and, you know, I, I, I knew it wasn't going to be you explained very clearly, this is there's no magic bullet here. And, and you know, the while, while things like soft tissue, you know, manipulation and, and, and dry needling have its place and, and can help, you know, reduce some of the tension it, it really takes discipline and commitment and motivation to keep up with the the strength strengthening and mobility work that's required to you know to remodel that tendon yeah so talk us through kind of working together what were some things that you noticed right away that were helping or worked well yeah. So, uh, first of all, the, the I'm I'm very uh, much a, a structured person. I, I I like to have a plan. I like to have things laid out. You do X, Y, and Z, and you'll get the results as long as you're consistent with your execution. Um, so, having a plan um, and and then you know, a feedback loop to where I can say, Hey, this is working, or that's not working. Can we modify this? Should I be doing more or less of this exercise? This one hurt. This one felt good. And being able to, to feed that back to, to you, Duane, was was really helpful in 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 crafting a you know sort of a customized routine, um, and that we built upon. You know, started off with some very basic exercises, um, to, and you you did some some good functional strength tests for me to kind of see where I was and learn about my, you know, my, my strength history and, and what am I, what is my body prepared to do today? And it wasn't just treating the hamstring. It was also what, you know, building you know, functional strength around those stabilizing muscles and, you know, other muscles we use in running uh, because they all play a part. And, and, and so, you know, doing, starting off at, at sort of baby steps and doing um, exercises that, weren't on the surface very challenging, but set a good baseline for where I was. And we quickly progressed as, you know, I, I mastered some of these exercises. So, um, you know, for me, once we started getting into more hamstring specific exercises, things like the, the Nordic hamstring curls and the single leg um, uh, bridges, you know, and the eccentric heel slides, th those, you know, I saw really good results. It, it, at first it was, difficult because I didn't have the functional strength to do them very well. Uh, but it was the consistency and, and noting, you know, my progress week after week and sharing, sharing with Dwayne and him, you know, kind of bouncing things back and forth between the two of us, uh, we were able to continue to advance and progress those exercises to where I could tolerate more and more load. Um, the other thing that was really got me um, fired up about working with Dwayne is he says, you don't have to stop running. And that was something that just blew my mind uh, that I, I could, I could actually be rehabbing my injury and continue to run. Now I'm not, you know, running 20 miles, uh, but I started off, you know, running 10 minutes, walk a mi couple minutes, run another five minutes. And, and we kind of built up gradually and what to my, to what my, my body could tolerate. Uh, and, you know, he taught me that, that, you know, it's okay to have some pain as long, but it's really the assessment, you know, 12, 24 hours later, do I still have that pain? Is it decreased? Is it more? And, 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 and being able to dial that in helped me progress slowly and gradually um, to, to higher and higher volumes of running while I was rehabbing my hamstring. Yeah. And I think that's an important point that you bring up, Tim, is that it is a 
progression. And I like that you brought up the point that, yeah, there is no magic bullet for this. So if you're listening to this and you have hamstring pain and you were tuning into this because you wanted the secret magic bullet, that's going to get rid of your hamstring pain tomorrow. We are not going to be able to give that to you, but what we're really talking about is a consistent effort. And obviously you could see Tim is highly motivated. Um, like you said, he's a structured person. So am I. So I think that's why we hit it off so well. And, um, you know, he put in the work and the consistent effort to progressively kind of load this hamstring tendon to allow it to finally heal because all the other strategies of kind of not running, resting, icing, stretching, all those other for tendon treatments, I can say, you know, more old school treatment. And it's not the fault of any other medical providers that you went to, because honestly, that's what I learned when I went to PT school 18 years ago. And that's what I used to give my patients way back when I started treating as well. Um, but we do know a lot more about how tendons heal nowadays. Uh, the science is a lot better. The research the last decade has come far. And I've implemented these strategies, like you said, personally for myself, when I've gone through these injuries, that's why it's great because when I was starting out running as a novice runner, I got all of these common running, you know, these common injuries that runners get. So I've been through them myself. I've worked through them and learned how to heal them through myself and then implemented that into others. And now that's what I do is share how to overcome these strategies within our Healthy Runner Facebook group and on the Healthy Runner podcast. So I'm glad that you are here sharing your story, Tim, because it's always nice to hear it from kind of first person perspective and to see kind of what you were going through and how you were working it out. And just to be clear for those um as, as Tim and I worked together in the beginning, we did do some in-person sessions in my clinic here in Connecticut, but I wasn't seeing Tim two to three times a week for six to eight weeks, like you would at a traditional physical therapy clinic. And that's not what was needed to get the results that Tim got. The key was that kind of ongoing monitoring of his exercises and the progression and the touching base. And so we were doing some in-person sessions and then we went more of a coaching model, um, which I've started doing with runners, you know, virtually anywhere in the country and the world really um, through coaching and just monitoring and progressing the program. And Tim would come with his questions and I would ask him how he was feeling after his runs. We'd go over his running, his mileage, and then how he was doing with the exercises and then add in those necessary progressions. So that was kind of, I see as a really turning point in kind of his recovery because we're really able to get him from being an injured runner with hamstring pain and just making his pain feel better, but really bridging that gap to actually getting back to running. And actually that's a great segue. So Tim, where are you now? What is kind of your running um, looking like. So just kind of timeline perspective, sure. we started working together in what month again? That was September. It was October. October. I, mean, I called okay. you in, in September and, and our first session was early October. Okay. Um, and we did, you know, our, our first sort of section, if I'll call it, was about two months um, where it was very hamstring specific. Let's get this injury under control. Let's start building the strength you need to, get back to running um, uh, in, in a normal way. Um, so, you know, I, I just really focused on building my strength. I, you know, uh, whatever running I did was really secondary to, to rebuilding the strength in, in, in my lower body uh, and just to, to, to be able to sustain running at longer distances and at faster paces. Um, so around the holidays is when I signed up with you for the 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 the, um, the 12 week strength program so that was sort of phase two if you will of of my recovery is uh you know a a, a much uh, uh, much more comprehensive strength training program um, but also we you know he he tweaked it and tuned it for me uh, based on 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 what he knew about my body and my injury and and so we we made some adjustments to to some of the exercises uh, but I continued to you know, to build my, my, my running volume. Uh, I didn't worry about speed or anything like that at this point. It was probably in, in, you know, um, early, you know, late, uh, late January, early February, I started talking to him about, Hey, you know, I want to start 
I want to start doing some faster running. So we talked about how to integrate some tempo runs uh, and build up some more of that stamina. Um, and, and then, you know, I, I moved into uh, shorter intervals and strides uh, to try and, again, build some more of that, uh, that, 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 that rebuild that muscle memory I had from, from, from those types of runs. And, and I found that, you know, I, again, every time I do one of these runs that was, you know, out of the, out of the, uh, that was different than a, a standard easy slow run, um, I would kind of reflect, you know, instant after, during the run, after the run, and then 24 hours after, it, how did I feel? Um, and I would relay my, my, my progress or, uh, setbacks with 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 Dwayne and we would you know model the, the the training but everything kind of as long as I eased into it and I took a, a pragmatic approach and reflected on that 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 those those runs and and uh, I saw I was progressing without enduring more pain in fact my pain was diminishing uh, I got to a point where I wasn't having any pain on the run I wasn't having any pain afterward I may have some soreness you know, um, the, the, the next, the next day, but it, it wasn't, it, it would go away. And I got to a point where running wasn't the source of pain anymore. It was, it was sitting. And I was, that was, so we, you know, I, I spent, you know, the last year practically in a standing desk, thank goodness for the maker, uh, because that really helped a lot. And not, you know, of course, not being able to sit wasn't great, but I'm, I'm back and, and I'm sitting now. So I, I mean, I'm able to sit for long periods of time with no issue at this point. But, you know, I, I, I worked up to a point and, you know, I, I told Dwayne, you know, from the 12 week, uh, start of the 12 week strength training program at the beginning of the year that, you know, my, my goal for, for, for this program is to, is to, you know, get my hamstring back to, you know, I want, I want, you know, 90% of, you know, improvement of, uh, uh, from where I started and want to be you know, back to 90% of my capacity. Um, and I, I think I exceeded that objective by the time we reached the end of the program or the schedule program. And, and, um, you know, I was, happy to say that just yesterday I ran a, uh, a 5k virtual race, uh, which is the first race F race-based effort that I've run since early 2020. Uh, and I had a fabulous experience. I, you know, it wasn't a PR, but it was, it was a, you know, a high quality race compared to my rel other efforts at that distance. Uh, and I have no lingering effects uh, and it, it, it just felt magnificent and it felt good to run fast again. That is awesome. Congrats. Yeah. I'm so Thank excited. You. That's awesome. That is great. So going out there for a hard 5k. Uh, yeah. So how has this affected your life getting running back? It, it's been incredible. I mean, having, having um, endured the the dark days uh, of, of this injury, um, it, it feels just absolutely phenomenal to be uh, back on the roads and 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 doing what I love. I mean, this is uh, it's a passion of mine. And and when and anyone who's a runner and, and is sidelined by injury knows how devastating that can be, uh, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally to deal with. And and you know, it it, it it's one of those areas of my life that it rounds out the quality of my life and, and to have that back and, and know that um, I, I have control over it. Um, and, and, you know, that, that as, as runners, you know, we all, we want to run. Uh, but I, I know how important strength and mobility training are to being a well-rounded runner and athlete and, you know, focusing on, on, on those things not only helps prevent injuries, but makes you a makes you a better runner. Um, you perform better. I, I note today that I'm I'm so much stronger than I was before. And not that I didn't do st strength training in the past. It it just wasn't as structured um, as the program that I've been engaged with the you know the past you know five and a half months with 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 Dwayne and and you know consistency is the key. Uh, the more you know, the more consistent you are with your training, whether it's running, strength training, mobility, exercises, consistency as it's it just it just works magic. If you if you can if you stick to it, and you may not see results in a week, two weeks, maybe three weeks, and but it builds on itself. And and the more you do it, the more consistent you are, the the the, the longer lasting the results will be.
Oh, preach, preach, Tim. I love it. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Consistency is key. And you guys know that if you've heard me before. Um, so what do you feel was kind of the most helpful working together? What has been the most helpful? Um, gosh, I, I, I think for me, it was, it was taking the, the time to get to know me and understand my running history, my injury history, um, and then you know, customizing uh, you know, a structured workout program or exercise program tailored to me and what my needs were uh, and being able to you know, be available to, to exchange feedback um, and, and, and you know, keep me progressing on my journey to recovery. Nice. Thank you for sharing. So if there's anyone out there that is on the fence about the program, any advice or recommendations you can give them? Um, I would say, first and foremost, your approach works. Um, it, it, it will get the results that you're looking for if you're injured, whether it's this injury or something else. Uh, and and you know, don't underestimate the importance of strength training uh, and mobility training to, to a runner's repertoire. Uh, it's, it's, it's not enough to, you know, to, to do it as a, have it in your catalog as an afterthought. And maybe I'll do it, uh, after my run this week, once, maybe 20 minutes, it, it really needs to be part of your, uh, a part of your, your routine as an athlete. Um, and, and, and I, I just, I, I know that while I'm, I'm pain-free today, I gotta be just aware that I have to be consistent in my strength training to keep to ward off the, the, that, that injury or any other uh, injuries uh, that may be lurking. Uh, so that, that um, you know, I, you know, my, I believe that, I strongly believe that prehab beats rehab all the time. Oh, I love that. Yes, prehab beats rehab. And if you are a runner who's been struggling with constant injuries and not knowing what to do for strength training for runners or for running, and you just need some guidance with your running and strength program, I help runners just like Tim all the time with our high touch uh, point coaching program called our Spark Back program to becoming an injury free runner and a lifelong runner. So what I do in this program is kind of take you through a run body performance assessment to really establish what your current running mechanics are, your current movement patterns, your current strength and flexibility, and then your training pain points and sticking points, because a lot of those can be contributing factors to why you got injured in the first place. And then we kind of take you through four different phases of phase one, restoring your normal movement patterns and your body needs for running. So that was kind of like when Tim and I started working together in the beginning, we were restoring his body. And then we started rebuilding the capacity for his hamstring tendon and his body to become stronger and more resilient for running. So that's when we were doing that kind of return to run program where we were kind of building him back up. And then we got to phase three, which was retrain. We were retraining when we added in some harder effort sessions. He added in tempo runs. He started doing more of the strength program, some more advanced exercises. And then really the last phase of our program is phase four, which is where we crush it. So we go next level performance. And this is really where Tim started doing interval work. He started adding back in speed work. And now he just crushed his 5k. So that's what we do in this high touch co uh, coaching program. And if you're frustrated with your training, you've had reoccurring aches and pains, and you need the structure and accountability to hit your running goals for 2021, just comment coaching into the comment box. Um, or if you're listening to this on the podcast, check out the link and we'll hop on a call and see if you're a good fit for a program like that Tim went through. Um, so you can kind of spark back, get your running fitness back, finally get over these stubborn aches and pains that you've been having. And I would love to be able to take you there. So Tim, we are in the final stretch here. If you can change one thing about the misconception of getting back to running with hamstring tendon pain, what would that be? That hand, uh, pro proximal hamstring tendinopathy is not a death sentence to your running career. That it takes a lot of patience, but it's, it's like anything else with consistency and persistence, you can overcome it. Um, it's been the most difficult injury I've ever had as a runner. 
but I, I feel like I've climbed a mountain and I, I feel you know fantastic going into 2021. You know, today for those marathon buffs out there, today is Patriots Day. So, you know, it's, it's today, today traditionally is when the Boston Marathon will be run, but uh, that's not happening now. They moved it to next fall. Registration opens tomorrow. I'm putting my name in the hat. Uh, I have a qualifying time. We'll see if it's enough because they've got a smaller field this year. But that's my goal for the fall is, is, is to run Boston again. Yes, I love it. I love it. So you've ran it two times before, right? Correct. That's pretty amazing. And you qualified for both of those, huh? I qualified for both. And the third one, this is this will be my third. That is fantastic. So yeah, kudos to you. One day when I grew up, Tim, I hope to be as successful <laughs> my running as you. <laughs> I don't know if that's going to happen, though. You got some natural talent. Well, I'm telling well, you, if you ran earlier in life, man. Staying injury free is half the battle. I, you know, I've only I've been to Boston twice, but I've qualified you know, almost half a dozen times. And I, you know, I've missed more than one uh, entry to Boston due to injury. So I, I, I am trying to. Um, Re uh, have a rebirth of my running career here with newfound knowledge and commitment to, you know, to, to strength training and, and staying healthy uh, as a runner. And as I grow older. Yeah. And it, if you guys who are on the Facebook live, where you're catching this on the replay, if you found uh, Tim's story helpful, just hit that like, hit the love button. Um, it would just help more people on Facebook be able to catch this when they start scrolling uh, later, later this evening or um, whatever day. And if you are uh, watching on the Spark Your Training YouTube channel, thank you so much for watching. And if you're listening to this on the Healthy Runner podcast and you found Tim's story helpful and you know someone who has hamstring pain and they're dealing with this injury, just kind of hit that copy link button, shoot them the episode so they can listen to this and know that there really is hope for this injury. And this is why I wanted Tim to come on the show to share his story because this injury by far, and I actually just got off the phone with two more people who have this injury today. And it's for some reason, the most common injury. I just don't know if more people are finally getting in touch with me about it. Um, or if more people are getting it this year of COVID when most people are working from home and sitting on weird chairs and sitting more than standing um, and or running more to get rid of the crazies, right? And the stress that we need to deal with uh, during this past year. But this is definitely something that I see a lot of runners get, and it's not often talked about um, out there as the common culprits like plantar fasciitis and IT band syndrome, runner's knee, Achilles tendon pain. So this one's a little bit, there's not as much information out there on proximal hamstring tendinopathy, but there are a lot of runners who get it. So I appreciate you sharing your story, Tim, because I think there's a lot that people can relate to. And I think it's, it's inspiring to know that there are options for treatment and, you know, you just need to, you know, whether it's, you know, going with someone like myself or finding a good running physio who has worked with people who have had this injury, um, really makes a difference, um, for this injury guys. So hopefully that was helpful for you. Um, thank you so much, Tim, for coming on the show and sharing your story. Happy to do it. Uh, it's, you know, like, like you said, it, this is a, there's not a lot of information out there around this injury for some reason. Um, but I, I'm glad I found you as a resource and, and the community here has really been uh, fantastic. So thanks for, thanks for having me on. Yeah. And guys, remember every single week we go live normally within our Healthy Runner Facebook group when I'm uh, Zoom cooperates and I can stream into it. Uh, so keep us in mind in your schedule so you can get your questions answered on common running topics of running injuries, nutrition, um, running mindset. We go over all that within our Healthy Runner Facebook group. So check out our group on Facebook. Just type it in the search box, Healthy Runner. It will be the only group you see that pops up and you can get your questions answered. Thank you again, guys. Remember, stay active, stay healthy, and just keep running. Until next time, bye.